Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show today. Jake Clark, John Schneider, Eric Faldi, um, caught John. Same, same day. Same, <laughs> same stuff. <laughs> well, different stuff. Same different day. Stuff. That's more, a misquote, but I'll, 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 let, I'll let it go. <laughs> We're a clean show here. <laughs> um, last I, week, we had some swear words last week. I know, John did not handle that well. It's a, hun it's a, he a was, what? Because it was the end of the thing. The video the, turned the off. The video turned off. We and didn't. Like, we didn't. Ah, oh, bleep, bleep, bleep. And it was, it was we didn't talk for thirty minutes, but the camera ran for thirty minutes. Oh. And then it's a thousand, uh, thousand hertz uh, frequency to get the bleep noise. Is I looked it? it up. Yeah. So. So yeah. So hopefully there. Are, well, there might be more John bleeps. We we could, you know what we, we need to do? Yet. We need to not have just that that standard tone. We need to have a stepper motor going at high speed. I thought about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just have a maker bot. <laughs> just have a <laughs> very very large raft. Just or have um. <laughs> <laughs> get a get a replicator too that has the uh, the x-axis end stop broken. Oh and it, man! And it holds <laughs> just the bell. I've done that with um, I've done that people with listening to listening to our show on their headphones right now are loving us. Oh man! <laughs> I always, yeah, I always sorry. sorry. The, apologies. The audio apologies. is always at negative six decibels, so no one's gonna <laughs> lose their hearing. They're just gonna be very annoyed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's dive into today's topics. Um, really, we we're we're gonna cover two. Um, traveling with your printer and, um, you know, just the printing environment um, that you're printing within. Um, so we print in, well, let, well I can just start with, with traveling, I guess. We'll, we'll hit the environment kind of second. So we've taken our printers all over the place. Um, Seattle, Pittsburgh, Santa Clara, Chicago, Tennessee. Yeah, um, pretty much both coasts. Nothing international yet, but our printers have yet. dealt with a lot. Yes, a lot in a in a little four by eight by four trailer. I think is what we had for the trade shows. Um, if you go back to our very first blog, I think that was the very first blog oh, post man. you ever did. Yeah, when we were going out to uh, 3D Printer World, or Printing World, or something like that. Yeah, 3D Print World, or yeah, something like 3D that. 3D Printing Expo. That was fourteen. Hey, we get we get on the road, um, and it's man. like fourteen hundred miles one way and take a right. And then when we get there, the right was to go right into the hotel. Oh, yeah, yeah, you want an easy, easy slick. like MapQuest printout. Fargo to the Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, it's, you don't. No, it's flat. Pretty much but, just aim for that. <laughs> you don't need a map. Yeah. So anyway, so traveling with your printer, uh, it kind of depends. There's, there's uh, with our Rep 2s and our 2Xs, pretty straightforward, uh, zip tie the gantry. So if you look at our um, shipping your printer YouTube video, um, which Eric will put a, uh, a link to in the video. Um, if you watch that, you'll actually see where we uh, zip tie the, the y-axis secondary and the y-axis primary and the extruder head uh, to the frame. Uh, that makes sure that nothing really moves, nothing will fall out. Um, and then we have these little clips that go in. One goes into the z-axis and one goes into the x-axis uh, belt clip. Um, you can purchase them on the website. I think they're free. They're free. But the shipping, you still have to pay for shipping. It's yeah. two, three bucks. Not, I'm nothing, trying to see nothing. if I can grab one without moving too much. Um, I think they're, some, on the other, some, they're on the other side. There's yeah. some and poorly I mean, printed and, ones that were in the other room. And basically, I know when oh, you're yeah. when you're I'll, getting I'll, the extruder head zip tied, what you're basically doing is just zip tying it in a corner. So it is either going to go against the corner of the printer or against that zip tie. You're preventing it from, like, let's say you hit the brakes really hard from the head slamming from one side of the printer all the way to the other side, which mm -hmm. could damage a Z end stop, it could cause the uh, the gantry to fall out, which, I mean, it's not difficult stuff to fix, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to do it. And you should, I mean, if you can prevent it, why not? Yeah, exactly. And, and when you're getting there, you know, you want to be focusing on the event you're going to, or you want to be focusing on whatever you're doing, and you don't want to be like, oh, I got to fix this printer now, I don't know what, oh, um, uh, so this is the, uh, uh, right here the shirt, uh, so this is the Z, Z axis one. Um, so this one will get a better, you can just put a link to the Yeah, to the with product. a little extra raft on there. Oh yeah. I couldn't get it all off quickly. No, you couldn't. Um, <laughs> ooh, that's on there. Somebody needs to re-level a plate. Um, so this goes and it clips in so that the, the rod doesn't pop out. We've had some of that where the rod will just pop out in the Z axis. And it's kind of a pain to get back in there. You know, loosen some bolts, pull it apart, pop it in, and then zip it back down. Um, and the other one, this one you can actually download from MakerBot, and I think that's where we got ours as well. We designed the ZX this one, but this one, um, you can look on Thingiverse. Uh, it's just, I think, shipping blocks, MakerBot or something. And then you'll also see the edge ones where they're actually the zip ties. So when you zip zip the machine down, you zip the, the, the Y-axis uh, linear rods, these little spacers go in there. You don't need them, um, but they're nice. But this actually goes right next to the, uh, um, on the rods that the carriage, 
carriage rolls on, so the uh, X axis clips the belt too. Yeah, and so it just makes sure that nothing can move. We've um, seen some pretty. Some printers might not be that bad, and then maybe they get beat up in the mail, and then yeah, we got yeah, we got to fix it. UPS man doesn't care. They're Someone's just like, fix it. and then they just throw it, and then yeah. I mean, our UPS people are great, yes. but not all of them are. Our FedEx guys better. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't see them very often. Yeah, um, it's you never know in the like when you're when they're going through the terminal and that kind of stuff. Some of them are really automated, and robots don't really care. I don't want to say they don't care, but. They're maybe not programmed to care. Box. It's like yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they just put the put this box over here. It might go rolling down a belt. So even though you say keep up in transit, uh, fragile, all that stuff, assume it's going to get dropped from six feet up. Yeah, and the robots might be listening. So don't say anything mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just yeah. you know, we make sure when you're you know if you're sending it via via UPS, FedEx, uh, USPS, DHL, um, whatever other way you ship um, just make sure it's it's really nice and packaged there's padding around it um, the build plate secure the, the, the all the rods are secure now this is going to be different for each printer um, I know um, with like when we were doing it even though we were putting it on our own own trailer and hauling it and even just in the back of my Ford Escape um, we would still put a lot of the clips in there um, just in case you know you hit a bad bump uh, something happens, or someone takes a turn too tightly, <laughs> and the trailer hits a curb. I don't know if anyone who would ever do that. Did I do that? No, but I'm sure I did. No, oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> Either that or a speed bump that you don't catch. Or you're going 70 miles an hour and you hit a squirrel. Potholes, anything. Yeah, potholes. Well, yeah, some of those roads that we drove on, especially going to Chicago. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. some of those are pretty bad. For instance, uh, say, I, I guess I'm just asking because I don't know. For yeah. uh, uh, Taz, uh, how, would you, how would you keep the build plate from moving around? That's I'm trying to think question. of how, because the way that they ship it, you have the build plate completely separate from, it's all uh, from, the, X -ax, it? from the X axis. They have it all kind of blocked in styrofoam so yeah. it doesn't move. Yeah, so they have, so instead of thinking a 3D printed clip, they actually have, it's like a styrofoam clip. Mm. And it goes around the linear rods and then it basically oh, gets taped there in was place. One on the so it, I know so it prevents saying. it. I was like, there's some sitting I mean, basically, I you, you basically <laughs> want to have it, you want to have it secured so it's either secured mm. against one end of whichever axis it is or so that you have something blocking it from both sides of the build plate so it stays centered in the axis so it doesn't have a chance to move around. Yeah, I guess what I saw earlier, it was just uh, a, like pretty much a square of styrofoam or like a really thick, uh, whatever it was. And then cylinder, boolean out, and then just a little slit so you can slide it up. Yep. Something like that. I don't know if I said boolean, boolean. There's an operation with booleans involved. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> No, I understood what you're trying yeah, to get at. I just can't remember. I don't know the terminology. Not, I just know Boolean from 3DS and a very tiny bit from whatever math I took in high school. Yeah, so the big thing is just try and have it as secured as possible so that stuff isn't sliding around. And then it should be able to survive most things. Um, I think a lot of you are going to be taking printers just in the back seat of your car. Mm -hmm. One thing to keep in mind if you have it sitting on your back seat, so we're going to use the Replicator 2 because there's a lot of Replicator 2s and Replicator 2 clones out there. Be careful how you have it oriented on your back seat. If you hit the brakes really hard, it might roll forward and go against the uh, the, the driver's seat or the passenger seat. From and the, there's sharp the corners. Ones. There's yeah. not sharp corners, but they're, it, they're... It's something that would pop a hole in leather mm -hmm. or even... Uh, well, even and watch a hole the feet, in, too. Yeah. Um, watch the feet of your printer to make sure that it doesn't pop a hole in your leather. Yeah, they can fall seat. off, too. We've lost so many of the little rubber fits. Oh, yeah, but just make sure that it doesn't damage your seat. Uh, that's one. Yeah, because it's, it's really just folded... Or not folded. Uh, what's the... Just bent metal. Yeah, I mean, it's so just a it's proper just, word. For I don't that. want to say it's sheet metal, but yeah, it's it's well, basically just, is. Well, I mean, it's the, a high, it's a thicker gauge, I guess, but um, I don't. It's it's metal, but yeah. just watch <laughs> out there. They don't chamfer the. They don't make nice fillets. It's just a corner, and, and uh, they put a little rubber cap on it. So yeah. just put something underneath the printer as well, especially on hot days if you have leather, because otherwise it starts. Depending on the quality of your leather, it could really start damaging it. Um, for example, the Lulzbot Mini, I just throw that in the back seat of my Impala. It has leather seats. Not normally a problem because I don't do it very often, but this summer I was teaching a class, so I was taking it back and forth from a university every single day. And one of the days it was like 90, 95 degrees oh, out. Okay. So it hasn't really permanently damaged the, the leather, but it stretched it a little bit. So you just have kind of that loose, that loose patch in the leather. Um, and don't leave it out on really, really cold days either. So being in North Dakota, I can get you know negative thirty um, in February, January. So don't leave it out in the in the cold weather. If you do, um, and you bring it in, let it warm up on its own. You know, don't turn on the machine. It's just kind of like you, like with your laptops. 
um, and other electronics. You know, you don't turn it on right away. Um, if it's been really, really cold, otherwise you could potentially damage. Uh, it does sound like a good test video, though, like a fun test video if we had a really busted printer. We're like, oh, it'll explode. Well, we, we could 3D print out in the snow this summer. Because right? there's, 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 a, there's, a couple things, there's a couple things that's going to happen if you bring in, if you bring in a printer. <laughs> if you bring a printer in from the cold, one, some of the plastic components might shatter. Uh, depending on what type of plastic it's made out of, how much stress it's under, how cold it got. But the second thing, and this is probably the bigger thing, is it's going to start uh, condensating. Or it's going to start sweating. Yeah. So all the moisture in the air in the warm room is going to start condensing on the cold surfaces of the printer. And since there are that many electronic components in it, you run the risk of if there's a lot of condensation, shorting something out, damaging the electronics. That kind of stuff. So don't just let it warm up, but make sure it warms up and that it's dried off fairly well. Yeah, I don't imagine it being a big deal, but just thermal expansion. It's, uh, yeah, it's just it it's a little thing. It's one of those. Shrink a tiny bit, but probably not enough that it would be a problem. Just just watch it. If you imagine uh, it's yeah, whatever they say on cell phone things, or just you know, don't operate between these temperatures. Just don't do it. Yeah. Sometimes hotter is okay. We should though. We should printers. we should take like a mini or a fifth gen or something outside and I think it'd be fun. I just, just want to see it steam up. Just print uh, and see what I, happens. I talked to Cooper Beerscheid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to talk to him soon, hopefully. Maybe get a tour of his space uh, for photostatics. Mm -hmm. But he was saying that their room, their printing room, is extremely hot. Oh. He said it's 95 degrees in there at all times. It's Fahrenheit, by the I, way. I believe But it. very hot. And he just said, you, you don't stay in there to watch it print. You just get in and out. Well, actually, that's a good, that's a good segue as we kind of look at the printing environment that uh, that you're in. So Cooper, you know, he has a smaller, smaller office. Um, you know, here we have what? How much square feet? About oh, 1,200 square feet up here. And it's kind of, it's sectioned off into three three spots. So we're in kind of the main printing area, um, parts and all that good stuff. Um, and then we have a lounge that a lot of the uh, a lot of you guys hang out in and, and work. Well, it's not the lounge anymore. It's your guys' yeah. office. <laughs> and then we're just behind one of the other walls here behind us. And so the environment that your printer is, because there's some people that are like, oh, well, I have it in my garage. I have it in my house. I have it in my office. Um, that can also kind of go towards your printing experience as well. So if you're in a garage and it's a hot, humid day out, you might be experiencing some issues with PLA um, mm -hmm. or just in general. Um, if you're using, uh, you know... PLA, nylon. Nylon's another really yeah. big one. Uh, anything that's hydro hydroscopic that's going to absorb moisture from the air. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, PLA... Especially if you don't have your filament stored properly and you're working in a humid environment, then it's really bad. For us, we're in pretty much climate controlled all year round, so we leave our filament out. Um, a lot of it's unsealed, but it doesn't really degrade because everything in it's here is air like conditioned. It's 40 percent humidity downstairs, so and in, in the other portion of our office. And well, not in the dew point. The dew point up here, I'm not sure what it is, but it's it's, it's got to be down by like you know 40, 50 degrees. Yeah, the, yeah, that's what I mean downstairs. Yeah, in our other part of the office, that's what it is. Well, but dew, here is, but dew point, dew point, and relative humidity percentage. You can't always compare the two unless because the relative humidity, if you know the percentage and the temperature that it's at, I then you know nerd. what the dew point is. Because that's relative instead of absolute. I'm just saying. I'm going off that, what the sensor pack that we got downstairs was. I'm not okay. Whatever that I don't okay. remember what he has. He just well, has humidity. Okay. So it's I, didn't, relative. I didn't ask the It's designer. relative. Todd and I have gone back and forth on that because you need a different sensor if you're going to have absolute We humidity. also went back and forth on if the air conditioner actually turns on the defrost on. It does. <laughs> it does. You owe me lunch for that. <laughs> it does. Anyway, yeah, we're good. Getting... <laughs> so with uh, different environments, you just got to be careful with that. So dust is another bad thing. Um, the, the, the humidity, um, whichever version you're looking at, either one. It's, it's, High humidity, it's... bad. Low humidity, good. <laughs> so if you're in the southern part, during you know like Louisiana and it's you know the middle of July might not be the best thing to go outside and start printing it's a little muggy I've been there yeah um, but you know here in the middle of February um, you know it's not there's not a lot of humidity here. Very, so, very dry in the winter so that's one one thing that you got to really look for and then, then you know the size of your space as well um, that'll also help because I know there's been some concerns about fumes um, between ABS and, and PLAs and nylons and all those different materials. Um, I mean, if you're printing in a closet, <laughs> probably something you want to yeah, be, be, be cautious about. You need some sort of air filter. I mean, even PLA, you get some very small particles. It's not anywhere near as bad as printing with ABS, but uh, basically if you can smell it, it means that there's some sort of small particles that are in the air. So we have, we have a really good air filtration system in here. Uh, not just the one that's built into the HVAC system, but we have a couple other air filters by the printers that help 
help to take in some of that stuff, including carbon filters. One, one consolation I've heard is that uh, PLA is uh, kind of a body safe thing. Yeah. Um, someone we know from Nature Works was saying that for like a stint or stent, I forget the, pro the proper term for like heart, it's heart valves. Yeah. Um, they Not have doctor. PLA in there that helps it set and then it just dissolves into the body. Yeah. So I asked about that. I said, oh, all the little, you know, you get the spider webs when you're walking away from the printer, you pick up something that's just following you around. And you, you get all tangled in it. And I was like, what if I inhaled it? He's like, oh, you know, it, it'll dissolve eventually. So yeah. Don't worry about it. So, uh, you know, that, you know, and then if you're working on the other side of that spectrum of like, okay, we're in the middle of a Boeing uh, manufacturing floor, which is, you know, thousands upon thousands of square feet, probably not the biggest thing you have to be concerned yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at dispersion. Yeah, but like typical classroom, um, you should be okay as long as you're not closing all the doors and, and, uh, so. I think about it like gasoline. Like when I was a kid, it's like, oh, don't smell the gasoline, you'll get brain damage. You're like, oh, as long as you're not huffing it, you should be fine. Just don't, don't sit over your ABS. Don't sit over your ABS Again. with a, with a funnel. We're not doctors. <laughs> I, Although I will, I will agree. Don't stand over your ABS print with a funnel. And don't I don't think that's gonna. I don't think that's gonna get you. No. It's not gonna do anything for you except It'll maybe you cancer. Feel, same with deal. Don't huff the deal. I mean either. Yeah. So uh, Eric spilled Eric. a little bit earlier. There's a stain back. Well, there. we were cleaning some PEI. It and smells and really so bad. It was, but it's yeah. not bad. It's just so strong. Mm -hmm. It smells oh, yeah. like someone squeezed a well, bunch of oranges. Well, it's technical So it's a very high concentrate. Usually, a lot of the other deal. I mean, products are they're a, they're a mixture of the water and you know there's a certain is it, percentage is it toxic? of water. And, no, I mean, could you? No, just I mean, like people. Well, that's what I people mean, do. Like they take it as a like a health supplement. Yeah. Like if you go on Amazon, type in D-limonene. That's what a lot of it is. It's little. I do not capsules. recommend you taking shots of our D-limonene. No, I was just curious. No, I'm not. I don't plan to do that either. But. Well, and that's why there's different grades of it. Or maybe we can make a funny video about it. No, no. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. <laughs> it's just a prank. <laughs> Yeah. Like I don't know. I mean, anything else on, on no, 3D I mean, printer transportation, 3D printing environment? Yeah, I mean, don't don't print in a freezer, don't print in an oven, um, don't print in a closet. If you if you do, make sure there's proper ventilation. Um, and for the for the sorry, you go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, okay, no, no. I was gonna say for the skateboard project I was working on, and I'm gonna come back to it hopefully this week. I was just last week was busy, um, but I used the freezer downstairs to help make a fit work better. It didn't end up helping. Well, it was because like I figured. Oh, it'll, it'll I, shrink, I thought, I thought it'll it was shrink. the other freezer. I was like the other freezer oh. don't work. It'll shrink something, and then I can get it to fit better. Mm -hmm. And then after it goes back in, it'll expand. It'll be a tight fit. But Same it, it, it did not end up mattering because that was like version two, and it just broke anyway. So well, the um, um, you can do that with build plates too. There's a, oh. there's a couple different build plates that you can actually put in the freezer. It's just kind yeah. of a little bit of a trick. And then glass build plates, yeah. but it, but you need to be careful with the glass because at the lower temperature, it might become more brittle, even borosilicate or tempered glass. You run the risk of shattering it. Hmm. Um, why, metal, would you, why would you put it in the freezer? Because it helps the, the, helps the print pop off. Oh. Basically causes the PLA. To, it's either the PLA or the build plate shrinks so you, ever so slightly. So it, you put it, it, it in creates, after, a, creates a slight mismatch. After the print, you'd put it in the freezer. Yeah, with the print yeah, post, on. post printing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't put any of the acrylic ones in there. I think that might damage the acrylic. I don't know, but I really don't want to find out. Yeah. If you do this at home, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. This I'm is one of the parts the of the shows where you can do it at home. We're not saying to film yourself doing it or encouraging it, but if you happen to, <laughs> let you us know. know a guy. Same with the D-limonene. I would love to see someone do that, but I don't encourage it necessarily. Yeah. No, there's deal. There's there's, there's D-limonene. I'm sometimes. just saying, like taking like no, it's probably a small pill. Yeah, no, like it's like actual, not like an orange. But yeah, don't juice don't glass. don't don't buy the D lime. You're like, all right, I'm gonna go to this party and we're gonna get we're gonna have a good time with this D lime. It's got the growler handle. Unless you're going. <laughs> all right, well, I don't know. On, on that note, I think we've about covered it. Um, so again, on behalf of myself, John Schneider, Jake Clark, Eric Faldi, thanks again for watching. If you have any suggestions or things you'd like us to talk about in future segments, please let us know in the comments down below this video. Um, if you happen to be listening to the audio version of this and clearly there's no form underneath it to submit comments, just send us ideas at support at Fargo3dprinting.com. All right, I think that takes care of it. Again, on behalf of all of us, thanks for watching. <laughs>